The America's winter season comes to an epic conclusion as we crown a champion. Eight of the top Hearthstone players from the Americas have gathered in Hollywood, California to dust off their best decks and duel until only one player remains. The winner earns a spot at the Hearthstone World Championship, the $25,000 first place prize, and of course, bragging rights. Whose preparation, passion, and belief in the heart of the cards will lead them to victory? Pull up a chair and find out as the 2016 Hearthstone America's Winter Championship begins. Well met, and welcome to the Hearthstone Championship Tour America's Winter Championship. I'm Robert Worth the Wing, joined at the desk by Saviz and Cora. Over the course of this weekend, we'll watch as eight players duel for a share of $100,000 prize pool, and more importantly, a trip to the Hearthstone World Championship later this year at BlizzCon. Savids, Cora, how are you doing? You excited to be here? I could not be more excited. We have a big announcement coming up and a lot of exciting Hearthstone action all weekend long. Super excited to be back. My second ever live broadcast. Great to be with you guys again. And of course, now I get to ditch that pesky uh, amateur caster title before my name. So yeah, I think it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, we're glad to have you here. Glad to have you as well, Savis. We're also glad to have TJ Sanders, who's standing by over at the sidebar uh, to break down all the high level analysis over the course of this weekend. Thank you very much, Rob, and the rest of the casters. I'm here at the sidebar where throughout the weekend, I'll be joined by some of the brightest minds in competitive Hearthstone and also Raynad. Raynad, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, TJ. I was a little concerned that the uh, audience would feel a little bit intimidated from an analyst desk. It's a little bit too good looking, but uh, glad you're here to help balance that out, buddy. Anything that I can do to help. Glad to have you here, Raynad. Always a pleasure. Uh, but uh, we have an exciting weekend filled with card slinging action. I'm looking forward to it, but let's take a look at what we're going to see today. We're going to start the day off with a very special announcement from the Hearthstone developers. And then we'll head right into Group A with Chalky versus Nostum, and then Amnesiac versus Talion. The second half of the day, we'll head over to Group B, where we'll see Bill take on Al Sky High and round off the day with Chess Dude versus Snail. How the group stage will work is we split the eight players into two four-player groups. The groups will play out in double elimination fashion. At the end of Saturday, we'll be left with four players who will move on to a single elimination playoff stage. And at the end of it all, we'll have our Hearthstone America's Winter Champion. I know someone else who's excited. We actually have our very own Frodan who's standing by Fireside. Frodan, how's it going, man? I'm doing great, TJ. Well met. Don't worry, buddy. We have some cold water under the sink to apply to those burns. I'm doing ex excellent. I'm here on the fireside part of the tavern where the players will be fighting for their stake of $100,000 and one ticket to the Hearthstone World Championship. They've come through a long journey qualifying through points of ladder play or becoming a fireside gathering tavern hero. We put them in a 128 man double elimination bracket where we took the top eight players to advance here in Hollywood, California. Couldn't be more excited to see who is going to be able to get the best of each other in a battle of wits and strategy. Now we want to remind people that we're playing a best of five conquest with one ban. If you guys aren't familiar, conquest at its simplest form is win once with each deck in a blind pick format. Let us know how you guys are doing. Let us know who you're cheering for, who you guys are wanting to win, as well as some of your favorite moments. Hashtag HCT. And let us know on Facebook and Twitter at Play Hearthstone. And with that, we're done with our introduction. Today is March the 11th. That's right. It's time for a special announcement. We have special guests, senior producer Yong Wu and lead game designer Ben Broad, who's here in the house. Ben, are you guys ready to drop the knowledge on what the future for Hearthstone is? Oh, we're so ready. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, it's, well then take it away. It's so exciting to be here today. In fact, two years ago on this day was the official launch of Hearthstone. So it's really awesome to be able to share some awesome news about what's coming next uh, on our second birthday. Indeed, yeah, it's exciting. And uh, look, the team's been working really hard to prepare for uh, what we're announcing today. We are going to be talking about Hearthstone's newest expansion today and before we do that uh, i think it's important to remember that this new expansion will herald the beginning of the standard format yeah i'm really excited about this because the players uh, will be able to choose how they want to play hearthstone um, if you're interested in a faster changing meta the standard format with a smaller uh, rotating card pool will allow the new expansion to have a greater impact um, if you're the kind of player who wants to get all of the new cards from the new expansion and play with all of the old cards that you know and love and try out all the crazy combos, uh, the WoW format will be available for you too. So 
we've started laying down the groundwork for both the standard format and the expansion coming out. So we will be patching on Monday. And with this patch, we'll be showing you guys a preview of the user interface that you'll be using to switch between standard and WAL format. And uh, you'll also be able to start using your nine extra deck slots right away. Finally! We finally have the technology. Finally. <laughs> um, we'll also have a new feature coming out called Deck Recipes, which will help you build fun decks for each of the nine classes. I'm excited about that. It's, it's a patch that's chock full of cool stuff, uh, like new uh, search filter functionality for your collection manager, uh, and even things like uh, support for the Thai language. Uh, Young, I'm really excited about that patch, but I'm really, really excited <laughs> to talk about the upcoming expansion. I mean, that's what they're really here to hear. It's, uh, <laughs> I mentioned that the team has been working super hard on it. It's, uh, it's, I think it's one of the best things we've ever done as a team. Absolutely, but it's a little different than what we usually do. Uh, it is. Look, you may think you know what we'll be talking about today, <laughs> but I guarantee you, you do not. We have some great surprises in store. Uh, but before we talk about exactly what it is, I think it's important to set the mood a little bit. Uh, this is not the same as things we've done before. And actually, the inn has been, uh, you know, getting a little, a little darker recently. It's raining outside. It's, stuff's changing, Young. Yeah, I mean, the inn is usually filled with really friendly people, and everyone's just laughing and being boisterous. But recently, we've had these strange hooded figures come yeah. into our inn. They're murmuring, uh, chanting. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely not exactly like the jovial inn you remember, where the innkeeper comes in and slaps you on the back, <laughs> makes you feel good about being there. And some of our best friends have started behaving really strangely. No, I totally agree, Young. <laughs> I'm right. talking about you. <laughs> what is that? I think we are, are <laughs> set the mood uh, well enough, that, that dark mood we're talking about. Uh, please get ready for the <laughs> cinematic for Hearthstone's newest expansion. There's an evil that's been dreaming, but now it's softly screaming. From the darkness, their power will grow. Their voices are made of poison. When you listen, you are sure to be disturbed. You can lock your doors. You can say your prayers. No creature can resist their wicked words. Never mind, no need to worry. That's all just a story of the whispers of the old gods. <laughs> whispers of the old gods is Hearthstone's newest expansion. Whispers of the Old Gods will have 134 new exciting and sinister cards, and it will be launching late April, early May. Young, I'm so excited about this expansion. There's a lot of cool stuff. I think it's really important to explain who the old gods are. Yeah, let's talk so about them. The old gods are these massive creatures who are chained beneath the earth. They're kind of a mass of eyeballs and tentacles. <laughs> and uh, these are the creatures who enslaved Ragnaros and the other elemental lords. They created the Nerubians and the Faceless Manipulators. These are the things that turned Deathwing into Deathwing. So, you know. Yeah, really, in the world of supervillains, these are the supervillains of the supervillains. Yeah, they're, they're mega. And <laughs> their only weakness, Young, is that they are chained beneath the earth and they can only really work via influence by whispering to the creatures around them and slowly corrupting them over time. Yeah, so the dark influence of the old gods have been uh, slowly changing some of the minions we know and love in Hearthstone. Sometimes it's a little more subtle. Uh, let's take a look at one of our good old friends, uh, the Loot Hoarder. I remember Loot Hoarder. <laughs> so we'll be talking about there a few of these minions that have been uh, corrupted by the old gods today. Uh, so the Loot Hoarder, he's you know two mana, he's got two attack and one health, like a little little guy. He's, he's a little greedy but adorable, and you know you don't mind hanging out with him. But 
Let's see what happens to him after the old gods are done with him. So the police. Oh, mine! Sorry. So the police. He's rude. He totally interrupted I know. you. Like, <laughs> Man, he's no, I, I interrupted lot. him. I'm in big trouble now. <laughs> so the polluted hoarder is the first card revealing from Whispers of the Old Gods. And he's an uh, example of a house, like a subtle way the old gods can change, uh, uh, corrupt our minions. So for four mana, uh, you play him. He's got four attack and two health. So he costs twice as much. He's twice as big and twice as vicious. So, um, you know, this is an example of uh, a minion that's getting a bigger and stronger and more vicious because of uh, the old gods. But the, the, tw uh, <laughs> the twisted whispers of the old gods can sometimes dramatically change a minion, so much so that they almost become a polar opposite, uh, an evil twin, like maybe with a mustache. Yeah, definitely if you will. with a mustache, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see, what, what else is a minion uh, that could have gotten corrupted by the old gods? Maybe anti keelbot? Anti keelbot? <laughs> How? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know why a mechanical creature can get corrupted by an old god. I guess we're Apparently, about to find yeah. out. <laughs> so, the anti keelbot, you play it for five mana, and uh, he heals you as a battle cry for eight health. I mean, he's a good dude. He comes out when you're getting beat down, and he bails you out, and he loves uh, healing people and, and making, making things better. But uh, once uh, it's become corrupted by the old god, it becomes something completely different. Let's see what that looks like. The corrupted heal bot is a five mana card minion, and uh, it's got six attack and six health, so it's much bigger than uh, uh, much bigger for its uh, for its mana cost. But um, instead of as a battle cry healing you for eight health. Uh, as a death rattle, when it dies, it heals your opponent for eight health. Man, look at those uh, machine guns <laughs> stocked with healing syringes. That's, I, I know. It. It's got like the, the chimney in the back is all corrupted by evil tentacles. Um, so the corrupted healbot is almost the mirror image opposite of the antique healbot. And I like, I like cards like corrupted healbot because uh, I like taking a potential downside and turning it into a tactical advantage. So imagine playing a card like this with the Akanai Soul Priest. And instead of healing your opponent for eight, you could be dealing eight damage. So Boom. I'm really excited to play this in, uh, in a priest deck. I'm excited too. <laughs> Look, M Young, there's, there's one minion that has been expecting the old gods for a long time. That's true. Um, he's been calling the end is coming for a really long yeah, time. Yeah, and Doom is finally here. <laughs> so, of course, we're talking about our good old friend, the Doomsayer. And so the Doomsayer has been saying the end is coming forever, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been kind of in an indefinite delay. So what the Doomsayer does is you play him, and then at the beginning of your next turn, he blows himself up and everything in the board in kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But now that the old gods are here and the end is actually here, he doesn't need to do that anymore. He's, he's not going anywhere. He's here to party. Let's see what that looks like. I was right all along. <laughs> he sounds more than a little bit smug. Yeah. <laughs> so for five mana, Validated Doomsayer has uh, zero attack and seven health. But at the start of your turn, it sets its attack to seven. So uh, you play this guy, at the start of your next turn, he becomes a seven, seven minion. It's, he's drunk with the old god's power. He's really angry at everybody who's been making fun of him. It's like, oh, it's that guy again that says the end is coming. Yeah. He's going to be beating them down. Super exciting. Uh, Young, we've now seen how the effects of the old gods can affect cards that we remember from other Hearthstone expansions. But I've always wondered what it would be like to unleash the power of an old god itself. And in Whispers of the Old Gods, there are four old gods. In each of them is a legendary minion in the set. The most insidious of those is the old god, Cthun. And Cthun lives in uh, an ancient temple. He sleeps beneath that temple, and while he's been sleeping, cultists and followers have been gathering around that old god, trying to wake the old god up, 
and empower C'Thun so that C'Thun's at maximum power when they unleash him upon Azeroth. Yeah, these cultists are more than just slightly corrupted by the old gods. They're completely on the old god side. So when you play these cultist minions, uh, they empower C'Thun. They buff him in some way, uh, regardless of whether C'Thun's already on the battlefield, whether it's in your hand, or maybe even when it's in your deck. So let's take a look at uh, one of these cultists. Are you my master? So the Beckoner of Evil, when you play her, as a battle cry, she immediately gives C'Thun plus two plus two, wherever it is. So let's say C'Thun is in your deck. This tentacly portal will open up, and you'll see C'Thun looking at you from beyond the portal. And you will see it getting stronger, getting two more attack and two more health. And it's not just you who can see this happening. It's also your opponent. So as you can imagine, as you play out your C'Thun deck, uh, both you and your opponent will see C'Thun getting bigger and bigger. And so your opponent knows C'Thun is coming. C'Thun's coming, yeah. And there are 16 cards in Whispers of the Old Gods that interact with C'Thun in some way. Let's take another look at one of these dangerous and sinister cultists. Do you hear its call? Don't be fooled by its adorable appearance. The Twilight Elder is a very dangerous minion. You play Twilight Elder for three mana, it's got three attack and four health, but um, what the card does is at the end of your turn, it gives C'Thun plus one, plus one. So guaranteed when you play this card, C'Thun's gonna get bigger by plus one, plus one. But every turn you're able to keep this minion alive, C'Thun's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. So C'Thun might not start out as the biggest minion in Hearthstone, but you can really easily see it getting completely out of control. All right, let's take a look at the legendary minion C'Thun itself. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Shocking. My dreaming ends. Your nightmare begins. So throughout the game, you'll see C'Thun start out at 6-6, but get more and more empowered by the cultists. So it's not going to be unusual to see C'Thun at 10-10, 14-14. 10, During playtests, it wasn't out of the question for it to get as crazy as 20-20. And when you play C'Thun, immediately, uh, let's say it has 20 attack, it will fire off these 20 crazy-looking eyeball missiles at everything on the board, including your opponent's, uh, opponent's hero. Yeah, it just goes... It just keeps going and going. I, I think it's actually more like... Right. <laughs> well, we can show you the video we almost showed you accidentally earlier. Uh, what you'll see is, uh, well, we're going to play Beckoner of Evil. You'll see that portal open, and you'll see kind of the, the current status of the Cthune that's still in your deck. Then Cthune will be drawn, and uh, it's all over from there, I think. Let's take a look. Are you my master? It's really intimidating. Jimmy! Oh, there's Cthune! <laughs> My so brutal. It's so brutal. It, it, I mean, usually when you play Cthulhu, when it's fully empowered, not only, it's usually going to wipe out uh, your opponent's entire board, and now your opponent has to deal with yeah, a board, yeah, giant, angry Cthulhu eyeball. So, uh, we, I love cards like Cthulhu because um, it really encourages you to build a deck around it. There's 16 different cards and Whispers of the Old Gods that interact with Cthulhu in different ways. And I really look forward to uh, players figuring out what the best Cthulhu deck is. And uh, since, there are, since there are a bunch of these cultists, you're going to be running into them as you open your uh, packs of uh, Whispers of the Old Gods. And we thought about this and it was re really important to us that when you open up your card packs and you see these cultists, that you're really excited about them. It's like, oh man, I got a card that empowers C'Thun. Like, I'm really excited to try this out. So we, we thought about this as a team for a little while and um, we wanted that to be a really cool experience. So when you open your very first pack of Whispers of the Old Gods, you will not only get 
um, those five cards that are in the pack, we're also going to give you the legendary minion, Cthune itself, for free with that first pack. Uh, absolutely, I think that's awesome. And also, we're gonna give away three free packs just for logging in. So everybody gets three packs and the legendary old god, Cthune itself. Yeah, it's gonna be really awesome. When you log in during the promotion period of Whispers of the Old Gods, uh, you're gonna get 15 Whispers of the Old Gods cards yep. uh, and Cthune and get ready to rock with the Cthune deck. Look, guys, we have a lot more to talk about as we get ready for the release moving forward. Uh, check out our website, oldgods.com, and we've managed to corrupt some of the <laughs> YouTubers and streamers, and you'll be able to vote on how the old gods' cards are revealed and in what order, and they'll be helping them reveal those cards. It's really going to be awesome. Excited about the whole reveal going towards the release. I know. We're going to be showing so many cards over the next uh, many weeks, and uh, I can't wait to see how uh, players react to all of it. Um, so you can actually pre-purchase 50 packs uh, starting mo next Monday when we, uh, when we uh, release our patch. And you can't open those packs until uh, Whispers of the Old Gods launches late April, early May. But you will also be getting, I think, the best card back we ever made. It's the Cthune Eyeball card back. It's super awesome. And I think we have an animation we can show you. It's animated in kind of a crazy way. Let's take a look at that. Oh, oh, God, stop looking at me. Yeah, don't look at me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it, it really, like, walks that line between super creepy but somehow cute. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm super excited about this card back. Yeah, I personally. can't wait to play yeah. with it next week. Hey, Young, that's, that's all we have for the, for the announcement. But don't go away. Not only do we have the greatest esports ever coming up, <laughs> but we're going to be revealing uh, a couple more cards during... The tournament this weekend, it's going to be nuts. I can't wait for the first match. Yeah. Chucky versus Nostum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to watch it. So I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys watch that game with us. It's going to be really cool. Dude, Chucky brought some nuts decks to the preliminaries. I can't wait to see what he yeah, brings. Yeah, the crazy zoo this deck weekend. with the uh, with the giant and the enhanced mechano. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Would love to see more of that. Well, it's coming up very soon. Thank you very much, anybody. Everybody, let's uh, let's run that cinematic again. I love that cinematic. It's let's great. Let's do it. There's an evil that's been dreaming, but now it's softly screaming. From the darkness, their power will grow. Their voices are made of poison. When you listen, you are sure to be disturbed. You can lock your doors. You can say your prayers. No creature can resist their wicked words. Never mind, no need to worry. That's all just a story of the whispers of the old gods. <laughs> The old gods! It's coming! I felt like Ben Brodo was channeling there. The old gods! <laughs> <laughs> really awesome to just see how everything has come together. TJ, give me some of your initial thoughts here, now that you've heard everything coming out of Ben Brodo and Yong Wu's mouth. Oh, I am super excited, and I, I can't wait to see what the other old gods are, and to build a deck around uh, Cthune is gonna be uh, really incredible. And I'm gonna be the first in line to pre-order those 50 packs and get that sick card back, so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. All right, and Raynette? Uh, Cthune looks awesome. I can't wait to see how it plays out in different classes. And yeah, really excited, like DJ, to see what the other three gods are. I'm excited that Rain has the first in line to get Cthune 20 to the face directly with the full board. It's going to be an awesome time. And again, check out oldgods.com. But the real fun is about to begin. We have our first match of the day. So let's go ahead and meet our players. The first person is Nostam. And here he comes out. Right now, Nasim, he's a wacky guy who plays for a wacky team called Grand National Champions. They're a group of friends who sort of made a name for themselves by queuing up these crazy decks against popular streamers. But Bob's here to prove that he's not just a wacky guy, 
but he's actually a strong player and a strong contender. Absolutely. He actually considers himself underestimated because people look at his deck building and they think maybe he doesn't have the skills, but I definitely think he does. Let's meet our second player, hailing from Indiana, it's Chucky. <laughs> Here comes Chucky. Chucky plays for Team Dignitas. Ever since his upbringing on the streets of the suburbs of Indiana, Chucky's been a competitive card gamer for as long as he can remember. And he's sort of been <laughs> plagued gamer. by the, uh, the the second place curse for so long now. And he's looking yeah. for that tournament breakout performance. I do happen to know another card slinger from the Midwest who has uh, a lot of unfulfilled dreams and wishes in tournaments. Rayned, how do you think Chucky would do this tournament? I think Shockey's chances are great. A lot of great players. Uh, I have plenty of fulfilled dreams in tournaments. Oh, okay. have, uh, but yeah, uh, his lineup looks strong. I'm, I'm excited to see how he does. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what these guys have in store. I'm looking forward to what they had to say about each other prior to starting this tournament. We got an opportunity to sit down with Chaki and Nostum to hear words about going head to head. My first opponent is Nostum, who's probably, you know, the person I know the most out of all these people, so probably my closest friend here. I'm not very scared going against him. I mean, he, he was kind of like unhappy to see he was going against me, and I was like, eh, whatever. I'm playing against Shaki, which I was pretty upset to hear because he's the player that I'm probably closest to in the tournament. I've, I've talked to him the most. He's also a really good player. A little bit unfortunate that we have to play in the first round. I think... Nasim basically respects me as the best player here, and so that's kind of why he didn't want to face me. I don't think it has to do with really lineup or decks or anything. I think he just knows that I've got the most results of anyone here. I've been to these before, and he'd much rather face kind of a, a new player that hasn't been in these situations before. I think Chucky is definitely one of the better players at playing his style. A lot of times he brings similar decks. He just brings what a lot of people consider to be the best decks, and he just tries to perfect that style of play. All the guys kind of switched their decks, and I did not. I was the only person to not change my decks. The fact that I was you know, confident enough to stick with the same things that I won with, nothing's really changed in the game, so why would your read change on the metagame? I really don't think that Chalky's tournament experience is going to give him that much of a leg up on me. I am, just on paper, the most experienced tournament player here. I think that's something you know you can't really replicate. A lot of times when players are really good, it matters more just how the lineups match up rather than the player skill. So if he gains an advantage, it's going to be more from his lineup than you know his experience as a player. I'm not really afraid of anyone, to be honest. I mean, that's kind of you know, a generic answer that a lot of people give, but honestly, I just feel like I'm the best here and I'm going to prove it. Two players, two very different stories. For Nassim, the chance to prove that he's one of the elite players in the Americas region. Chance to prove he's not just a guy who plays, as TJ put it, wacky decks. Uh, by the way, we are actually putting in a ban on the word wacky for the rest of this tournament. TJ right. will not be allowed to say it, but uh, Chalky, the opportunity to break that curse. The curse of the number two. You figure he walks around, just scribbles out two wherever he sees it, draws <laughs> one. Really wants to prove that you know he's not just one of the top guys, but he is the top guy. And a lot of ambition uh, for Chalky. What do you think of his chances here this weekend? Yeah, I mean, this is as big an opportunity as he's likely to get because he comes into this as the favorite. Normally, he's used to a pool of players of similar standing, similar experience to him. But here, he stands out as one of the, the glowing lights, one of the brightest lights. So this is going to be his opportunity to do exactly as what he said in that video, which is impart himself as the number one player in this tournament and make his experience and his talent show. Yeah, for sure. Chalky is the one, like he said, who has the most tournament experience on paper. But I don't think we can count out Nostum. He is... Okay, I can't say that word that we've put a ban on. He's right. he, he's got some interesting play style, some interesting decks, and uh, but we certainly can't say that he doesn't have the experience. He's still a guy who's been playing for quite a while and does have some open tournament experience. So I think it could still be anyone's match. Absolutely. Now let's uh, go ahead and take the chance here to get to know these players a little bit better. Sato, why don't you tell us about Nasdem? Yeah, as we've gone over multiple times, bit of a penchant for the fun and innovative decks, but uh, the interesting thing is that when he comes into a tournament, he decides to bring just a more solid, consistent lineup that gives him the best chance, but even confessing that maybe he may not be as comfortable with these decks as the other players in the tournament, but he's bringing them just because he thinks they're the overall strongest. Um, as Cora mentioned, does have tournament experience, maybe not in the huge premiere events, but a lot of open experience, land tournaments, uh, notably at Onog Summer Series and Tespera packs. 
right? So Nasim, no stranger to competitive play, maybe not on the same level as Chalky. And Cora, why don't you walk us through a little bit about Chalky? Absolutely. So Chalky, like we said, one of the more well-known players. He is on Team Dignitas, and everybody sort of knows him as that aggro player, that guy who likes to go face whenever he has the opportunity. He did compete at the 2014 America's Championship the year that Fire won, Firebat won, but uh, failed to qualify for the World Championship. So this could be sort of his redemption. Uh, actually left Purdue University as a sophomore to pursue a full-time Hearthstone career. So not only is his Hearthstone play more of that all-in smork lifestyle, but so is his real life as well. He's gone all in on a Hearthstone career and a win at this tournament would be a huge deal for him. Right, that's kind of an important differentiation because a lot of these players, you know, we saw at the America's preliminary and the Europe preliminary, they're playing here, you know, they're like, oh, this is a fun thing. I'm just going to kind of do a part time. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, if I win, that's great. If not, you know, I'll go back to the drawing board. But for Chucky, you know, he's all in on this. This is the lifestyle he, he wants to kind of cultivate, that esports champion. It's a <laughs> kind of a standing joke in the community. But but being that esports champion, and like I said, being number one and being the best, let's take a look at their lineups. Chucky's bringing Warlock, Druid, Paladin, Shaman. Nasim's bringing Druid, Shaman, Warrior, and Warlock. Cora, what do you make of these lineups? I like them. They're very similar. We do see the only difference is that Chalky's got that Paladin, Nostum with the Warrior. Uh, but I think that they both had the same idea. It's, you know, the strongest decks right now. Chalky said the meta hasn't changed. We're not going to see a change in the meta for a while still. So he's like, well, you know, why would I change my decks? Right, and Chucky has just decided to bring what he, he views is the strongest lineup, and he's done that with a ton of statistical analysis. He, right. he just says this is the best lineup. He's tested not only deck by deck as to what the best uh, lineup is, but also card by card. Mm -hmm. He's put work in and tested individual win rates of cards in individual decks. So he's saying, never mind what the meta is, this is the best lineup, this is what's going to win the tournament. Right, and we actually want to know who you at home think are going to be winning this. So feel free to give us your vote, hashtag Chucky, hashtag Nostum, and we'll be looking in over the course of this match to see who you at home think we win this but it looks like uh we're almost ready to jump into our first match i do want to touch on these bands real quick sure when you look mm -hmm. at the bands what do you make of them Saddle? uh so both players banned warlock um we had a little bit of discussion with the the players beforehand these guys know each other quite well and i think they both have a, a lot of respect for um each other's ability as a, a zoo player primarily i don't want to reveal too much information about what these guys are playing but a lot of players feel that zoo is the strongest deck in the game right now it just has powerful matchups you can vary it and build it in a series of ways that beats particular things um so i wouldn't be surprised if that's the thinking yeah right. i think nostum actually said you know what just go ahead we'll both ban the warlock make it a level play field <laughs> right, right. I think it was what, he, it what he actually game. said. Make it an honest match, so just go ahead and get those Warlocks out of the way. Yeah, and I want to stress that. These two were friends coming in, but they talked a lot over the course of the last few days. They've been very close. They, they've been hanging out after you know the rehearsals and the practices. So uh, while obviously both of them want to win, this is kind of one of those things where they have maybe shared a little bit more information because they, they have that closeness. And curious to see how that pans out. But we hop right into game one here, and we see Chucky opening up with that Druid, and we see Nasim opening up with what appears to be Control Warrior based on that bash. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Very rare to see a bash in a, a more patron build of Warrior. So it does look, this, look like this is Control Warrior. Going to have a tough time up against the Druid. The matchup is has swung a little bit back towards the Warrior recently because of cards like Bash. Um, but the Druid is generally favored overall, especially if you're an experienced Druid player in the matchup and really know how to use your, your minion timings. Right, I do want to point out to Chalky, if you look at his opening hand, we see Druid of the Claw, we see Azure Drake, Lotheb, and Piloted Shredder. Now, Chalky brought an aggressive Druid to the Americas preliminary. Uh, this looks more like mid-range to me. Cora, uh, what do you think about him changing from aggro to mid-range at the uh, championship here. You know what, it's definitely straying away from Chalky's aggressive style, but I think in this case, at a tournament of this scale, it's better to just move more towards consistent decks than to stay with what you personally would rather play. Also a touch of gamesmanship from Chucky because we saw him mention in the interview, I have not changed my lineup. And he in fact, he hasn't changed the classes, but the deck choice has changed. Right, and we see opening hand here for Chalky, two living roots. Now, this is one of those things, uh, Sato, maybe you can walk us through, where for a long time, Darnassus Aspirin was kind of the, the go-to, sure. and then living roots has kind of taken over that spot. Why do you make that decision? Um, so, Darnassus Aspirin was amazing at the start of uh, its introduction when it was a surprise, and people didn't know whether you were going to be playing it or not. When it became such a meta staple, people were able to mulligan to beat it. And also, if you don't, get that card early on in the game, it's much more dead later on than Living Roots, which can be used for tempo with Azure Drake, it can be used to add burst damage to your combo at the end of the game, it can be used to generate immediate ball presence for Savage Roar. Right, there's nothing worse than you being at 14 health, and you're like, all right, or you're at 16 health, you're like, the Druid can't kill me, yeah. I'm good, I'm good, <laughs> then they're on 10 mana, you see the combo in the little poke yeah. from Living Roots. Arrow comes to face, oh, Living Roots, I'm dead. Yeah. So yeah. close, but not quite. Uh, the Living Roots, really strong normally, but against a warrior, like you said, there's a couple kinds of warriors now, this is 
clearly not patron, but a couple different kinds of the control warrior. We see the more regular control warrior that stalls the game and then has those huge bombs at the end like Grom, Dr. Boom, even a Ysera or an Alexstrasza at times. But there's also this more Elise warrior deck that we're seeing that actually caps at six mana. Um, I would say that that's more likely to be seen in a tournament like this. And actually against a Druid, that deck mm. has a better chance. Doomsayer coming into Nostum's hand. What do you make of that, Saddle? Yeah, very interesting inclusion. Tends to uh, suggest we're moving to more towards that kind of removal warrior mm -hmm. that you were talking about as opposed to the big take over the game in the late game kind of style with the big minions. This is uh, focused about removing all your opponent's stuff, just surviving with armor up and then eventually tank up and just removing threats one by one. Problem is, in this matchup, Druid has a lot of threats. Right, and uh, you bring up that style of warrior that's more just kind of like removal, removal. I, I believe the win condition is something like Elise in the end, and then you right. just make some legendaries. Mm -hmm. Hope you don't get a whole like hand of Nat Pagels <laughs> and just go for it. But uh, how does it fare against more kind of mid range style of decks? Like Druid, obviously, you know, famed for its ability to just suddenly turn on the heat, have like one minion on the board, possibly two, and then just burst you down. So does it fare as well against those kinds of decks? It, it can do OK. And this is one of the decks that started to bring the Control Warrior matchup a little bit uh, more in line with Druid. The problem is if the Druid player is experienced. And something I, that I was touching on at the start of the game is really timing your minions together. You, you don't want to play just one threat at a time against this type of deck. Because you play one threat, they death spite it. You play another threat, they shield slam it, etc. You want to use your innovate timing sensibly, uh, play two minions at a time, make sure you start building a board presence. Or the other way you can do it, since the deck is so slow, is just hoard a lot of resources Sources, if you get like an Ancient of Lore draw, Emperor a huge hand, and then just go from there and overwhelm them quickly. Right, we see there the Innervate comes out, it brings out the Druid of the Call. Now he floats a mana in doing so. Cora, what, uh, what do you think about that? I really like it because it makes it so that Nostum can't just hit into that Puddle Stomper and clear the majority of Chalky's board. Also, on four mana, you don't want to play that Keeper of the Grove when there's nothing else on the board. Uh, Chalky probably knows that this deck runs two Sludge Belchers, so that's a much better use for the Keeper of the Grove. So in this case, it's definitely all right to go ahead and float that mana. Right, and the Doomsayer coming out now. When you see Doomsayer, a lot of times it's in something like Freeze Mage, where you use the Frost Nova to kind of prop it up and make sure it doesn't die. Against Druid, at this point, you see three damage represented on the board. You maybe count four with the hero power and almost have to think that this Doomsayer is not going to proc. Keeper right. of the Grove comes out as a silence. Uh, we see the possibility of something like Living Roots, Wrath Swipe, all these direct damage that kind of the hallmark of, of the Druid deck. and. Uh, why do you think Nostum just drops that down here if, if odds are it's not going to survive? It's it's a really good timing for it because he was able to get uh, an almost complete board clear. So by timing the Doomsayer here, it means if your opponent has a Keeper, which is the perfect answer for it, it's not an emergency situation. So the Keeper here, if he does have it, isn't even protecting that much on the board. Um, so it's, it's a much better situation now while there is a chance for it to live than if he would do it later, where if he Im immediately gets silenced, he loses the game. It's just guaranteed to get cleared. So the timing of Doomsayer's index, which like you say, don't have guaranteed procs for it, like Frost Nova, is really, really important. And if the Doomsayer does actually go off, which unfortunately in this case it didn't, it would put Nostum very ahead as far as he can go ahead and make that first move the next turn, get that minion on board. And then because this warrior runs so much removal, he can essentially just protect his minions mm -hmm. permanently. Right, and we talked about how this is traditionally kind of a favored matchup for the control war or for the Druid right, over the Control Warrior. When we look at Chalky's hand, he's, he's kind of in this awkward place that Druids kind of find themselves in in this matchup where they haven't found an Ancient of Lore. Uh, you know, he has Emperor Thor's hand, but again, discounting this hand feels awful. And he, he went ahead and kind of went a little bit, not all in, but he really put some chips on the table there. They kind of build this imposing board to just start trying to assert himself and pressure. And we see that Sludge Belcher is going to contest it great, and Chalky forced to use a Savage Roar here to get through this. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty solid Savage Raw, though, this is something the players probably don't do enough at kind of the, the middle levels of Hearthstone is use Savage Raw for advantageous situations like this. The Savage Raw here deals 10 damage, which may just well be the most damage that that's ever going to do in the game. It allows a 5-1 uh, Puddle Stomper to trade cleanly into a Belcher, so the Savage Raw gets a lot of work done here and suddenly pushes him all the way down to 6 health. I mean, that is a lot of pressure on Nostum. This deck does usually run two brawls, but uh, this isn't a, a board that you really want to brawl. Even though you're at six health, it just doesn't feel too great. I really like the Death Lord. I think that's a great inclusion in the list, but unfortunately, it doesn't work with the mana too well this turn. Yeah, we do see that uh, that boosted revenge is now online since right. 
Uh, you know, Nasum's health has fallen low enough, so certainly an option. Unfortunately, it doesn't fully clear because that Keeper of the Grove does have four health, so Chalky's kind of built his board in a way where, uh, kind of regardless of what Nasum has, there isn't like a super convenient clear that makes a lot of sense. We are going to see it looks like that Revenge come out, and we'll see what he chooses to do with the rest of his mana. It looks like Death Lord armor Death up Lord is armor the play. Up. Yeah, this was the play that jumped out to me. Didn't have a, a nice organic board clear for the full board. Using a Bash or a Shield Slam on a 2-1 there seems a little bit desperate. He still has that Death Lord. He's already seen one Silence being used obviously as we see it on the board so this seems like a solid enough defensive play and he can try and uh, hope that some pressure is relieved in the following turns and he can climb back onto the board with shield maiden shield block sludge belcher etc yeah. yeah when you have that death lord up against druid druid can actually have some big minions that come out as a response to the death lord so uh definitely something that can be kind of problematic we see chalky just jam down emperor thor's hand and Nostum doesn't know the quality of Chalky's hand, right? So if you're Nostum, you're just kind of living in this perpetual state of fear of like what could be there. But uh, Nostum just going up on that armor up plan, he's able to really quickly deal with Thor's hand and fully clear the board. So uh, where do you put Chalky right now, his chances as the mid-range Druid player? See, this is the point where this warrior deck, it gets so low, the Druid does so much early pressure, but now the warrior has that removal pretty much every card in its deck is either to stall or remove another minion. So to be able to go ahead and play out that shield maiden, get a body on the board, and then use the shield slam as such efficient removal on the Emperor Thorasan, now Nostum can protect his minions, continue removing Chalky's minions, and we see Chalky's hand just it's, it's pretty weak right now. He's got the force of nature. Mind control tech would be good, but Nostum might not extend into it. And then the wild growth, which is just so dead at this point in the game. Yeah, and just looking back at the other hand, Nostum, Nostum's hand here, he has plenty of one-by-one -one cards here that he can use to sustain. The Shield Block and the Sludge Belch are both excellent defensive cards. Even if Chucky can somehow get through that, if a Justicar is drawn... The Caster Curse yeah, lives on! Exactly, so I was just going to say, Shield Block and Sludge Belch are one-by-one -one cards. They're one-off problems that you deal with after they're cast, but once Justicar is drawn here, that is the long-term stability that Nostum needs from this point. Now, Nostum is safely out of combo range with that Death Lord up just for extra protection. And Chalky's hand, he doesn't have any, he doesn't have Ancient of Lore, doesn't have Ancient of War, any of those big minions that the Druid uses. Oh, oh that's awful. We see Nostum a little cheeky smile there. He's like, <laughs> all according to plan. Well done, Doomsayer. And Chalky really needed to grab something there. Even, I don't, Death Lord wouldn't have been ideal, but it would have been obviously better at this point. And I want to bring up the fact that Chalky's used Emperor Thor's hand, and that's no longer on the table because one of the ways you can maybe come back in this situation, even against the face of all this armor, is something like double combo with a Savage or just like start doing inhumane amounts of damage mm -hmm. as, as Druid is wont to do at points. But okay, that's that's good. He does uh, get the Azure Drake. It's I mean, all right. Yeah, it's good and bad. His hand is kind of low on, on business right now. He has a few <laughs> cards in hand, but nothing he can like proactively dump on the board. So if an Azure Drake draw off the top of his deck that would then redraw when he played it, right. it would actually be really powerful. So sure, a 4-4 on the board is nice, but it's also a utility card that he now can't play for Battlecry. And at this point, he would have actually rather had it because he's got that swipe in hand. To yeah. be able to Azure Drake swipe late in the game is really efficient removal for Nostum's side of the board. Get that Shield Maiden off, help clear off the Justicar, but... A 4-4 is okay, but here it was just a little bit too easy for Nostum to remove. Interesting decision for Nostum not to respect the 0-4 on the on the board. He, you know, I, I, I can see the value in being aggressive, putting your opponent on the clock, reducing the amount of time they have to climb back into it. But of course, any target on the board for Druid does compound the eventual damage of a, of a Savage Royal combo. Right, and sidestepping the <laughs> casterism of saying something like, we're going to say uh, exactly what Shocky needs to find, which is Ancients <laughs> of Lore. He needs yes. to find Dr. Boom. He just needs to find something powerful that just intimidates and threatens the board. Two Wild Grows, as much as they're not great to have in your hand, and prior to this point, you are going to get some draws. Maybe you get those cards that you're Ooh. looking for. But oh, and he is, yeah, innervate. This is something so that happens. Turn ten, right? This is something that happens to Druid. And as much as Druid is kind of a maligned class to be against, there are just points where you get these clunky hands. You have the innervates way past the time of needing them, or sooner than you need them. You have the swipes, you have the force of nature, but you're not developing threats, and that's what you need to be doing in this situation. Yeah, this is the price of admission for having such powerful combos like force of nature, savage roar, and having such uh, fantastic mana manipulation effects like wild growth and innovate in your deck is that they're extremely situational, and the price of admission is that you have to put those cards in your deck, which means you're gonna draw them at unfortunate times on, on occasion. Do you have the shield block into the Elise Star Seeker makes it so that Nostum actually has the perfect way to use his mana this turn. Go ahead and play the Elise. He's actually going to choose to armor up instead of the Death Lord. Just wants to really 
you know, give as much health to himself as he can. We see 32 health. He has six health only, but more armor, making it so that he has more health than he actually started with. And that is why this warrior is just so frustrating for the druid to deal with. You get so close, but it's just not quite enough. Right, when you haven't seen uh, the force of nature just yet as a warrior, you never feel safe. You're never like, there's never a point where you're like, oh, I have enough life. I'm enough armor. armor. This is it's probably good. Because then suddenly a minion sticks on the board, like Lotheb comes down, and then all of a sudden combo comes out. You've, you've neglected to deal with the Doomsayer. A Doomsayer yeah. could ultimately mm -hmm. be your undoing. Yeah, I would say 32 is getting pretty close to feeling uh, pretty comfortable <laughs> in your position. But 26 also, damage to Lotheb. I believe okay. that's now one Savage Raw and two Force of Natures that mm -hmm. have been used for board purposes. So, right. you know, Chucky is going to have to win this game on the board now, honestly. And he still has one Drake, two Ancient of Laws left in his, in his deck. This Warrior deck classically doesn't play too much card draw because they have this backup strategy of just taking control decks right. all the way to fatigue. Wow, and Chucky's going to go ahead and concede. Nas him takes game one and uh, really understood kind of what he had to do there, which is just as you guys said, survive. Mm -hmm. All he needs to do is just make sure his health does not hit zero and over time he's going to win that. We saw the Elise Star Seeker come out, which is kind of a win condition in dicier games, you know, if you need to actually have that extra punch, but didn't even really need it that game. Chalky just realized he did not have enough damage to deal with Nostum and armor or tank up kept coming out, shield blocks, shield maidens, all this armor and you know, Chalky unable to do anything about it. Right, that, that Justica Trueheart came out of the deck at the perfect time for mm -hmm. Nostum. I was just talking about how that could be the one card that gives him the long-term stability that he needs. Came off the top with the perfect timing. And uh, like I said, Warriors have climbed back into that matchup a lot more effectively now. And that's one of the things that can happen to Druid with these additions like the Living Roots. They can just run out of big threatening things to, to punish the Warriors with. Yeah, there was actually one turn there where Nostum had a Death Lord on the board, but I think he only had six health and two armor. Yeah. If Shocky had had the combo at that point in time, he would have actually been able to kill Nostum. But right. unfortunately, he had just used that Savage Roar, did not have the necessary cards in hand, and Nostum was just able to spiral it out of control from there. Right, so Nasim takes a 1-0 lead on the series against Chalky, but you know, Nasim's somebody who isn't necessarily seen as a serious competitor, or competitor, but it's something he's looking to make that mark of. And we actually had a chance to talk about Nasim about evolving into more of a serious Hearthstone competitor. So let's take a listen to what he had to say. It's my in-game name's really cute. It's just gonna be my last name backwards. And uh, it was some pretty clever stuff. I am a streamer, and I think my stream is actually different than most people's stream. I'm just hanging out in a call with friends while playing the game. So it's like more of a casual environment where people just come and watch me and my friends. I initially got a little bit popular because I played against Trump on his stream, and I was playing these like just absolutely stupid decks. Ooh! Got him. Uh, a lot of times I feel like people don't give me enough respect just because I have that reputation as someone who just plays a lot of dumb decks. I definitely want to show people that I can play at the top level with the rest of them. The first tournament that I played in was a TESPA event, and up until that point I was just taking the game very casually, and I ended up qualifying for it. So after that point I thought I could you know, travel because of this game, and I began to take it a lot more seriously. And I've been around in the competitive scene for a while. I've been one of the most successful open tournament players. I've qualified for, this is my third land now, which is pretty rare for someone to say that isn't like a pro player. I'm one of the most consistent open tournament players, and this weekend I plan to take home that first big tournament win. Nostum, a man on a mission, looking to become one of the more well-known, more established, well-respected players. And Cora, we talked about the America's Preliminary. For, for a lot of these players who aren't necessarily in the spotlight all the time, mm -hmm. they aren't going to these big tournaments, these big invitationals. They're out there grinding it out in the open, and they're out there trying to make that name for themselves. And uh, for Nostum, you know, something he has a chance to accomplish here is take down someone like Chalky, take down someone with that competitive pedigree. What's it like as someone who's also been out there, you know, kind of grinding out these opens to have that opportunity? I mean, it's a huge opportunity, and it feels really good to be able to go up against these more established players and actually, you know, maybe even come out on top. We do see that he is currently up 1-0 against Chalky, and it is actually important to note that Nostum was not originally supposed to be in this tournament, but actually did end up winning a second chance tournament after Fibonacci could not unfortunately be able to travel here in time. So for him, this is like the second, second chance. I mean, this is even bigger of a deal than it would have been if he had made it in the first place.
Right. We, so we sorry. We saw in game one there the very definition of what he talked about, where his his stream is kind of this wacky thing where he plays crazy decks, but when it comes to tournament time, it's serious time. We saw him bring the super slow fatigue removal control warrior, which is about as far away from wacky as you can get. Right. And Hopping into game two here, we see now Chalky's going to stick it out on this Druid, and Nasim's going to Aggro Shaman. And Aggro Shaman is a deck that ever since League of Explorers has really made a mark, and it's one of the decks that the pro players absolutely believe can just take a match at any point. It's There are very few things where the Aggro Shaman cannot just find a, a way to do enough damage over time uh, with just extremely swingy burst turns, stuff like Doomhammer, Rockbiter, all these elemental spells, stuff like Crackle, when, it's, when Crackle's on your side, that is, when it's not rolling threes <laughs> all the time. Uh, Chucky was earlier talking outside, and and he was kind of saying, yeah, his numbers for this weekend were were one and six, six for you know mysterious challenger and six for crackle. So nice. one and six were the numbers I he's like looking it. for. Have to figure Nostum is too. Don't want to be seeing any of those three damage crackles. But yeah, it's a really powerful deck. Cora, what do you make of it in terms of a tournament composition deck? I actually really like the aggro shaman in terms of tournament composition because you're going to be seeing a lot of druids, a lot of warriors, occasionally patrons, which the shaman is pretty good against and a lot of paladins with the shaman also has a really nice chance against so i think especially in this matchup nostum is slightly favored against the druid i know the druid druids can do anything let's be honest but whoa that opening hand that is whoa, one tunnel trog is usually you're feeling <laughs> really good now Ooh, Sato, you look like you just want to say something. What's yeah, on your mind? I was about to say, you made the point early on that this is one of the decks that players really feel like has a chance to win any matchup, and it, it's very, very true. It is one of those decks that just tries to curve out and be asking the questions instead of giving the answers. And even in a bad matchup, Tunnel Trog's on one and Doomhammer on five can get a lot of work done. I'm just going to point out one thing. One Tunnel Trog is good. Chalky's afraid of the number two, and Nostum has <laughs> two Tunnel Trogs right now. I mean, that's... I, I, I don't know what to call it other than hey. unlucky, I, awful. Continuing the fear of two, a pretty good two drop has just come down mm -hmm. to follow this up. So two tunnel trogs followed by the totem golem for two mana, buffing both trogs up to two attack. <laughs> Chucky sat on the other it's side Chucky's going, no, nightmare. the number is happening. Chucky is one of those players who uh, a lot of times in these situations when the chips were down, we saw a lot at uh, ESL Legendary Series Season 2. You know, he's playing Silent Storm, things are going against him. He looks very stoic, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. I would imagine knowing Chucky, as well as I've, I've had the privilege of knowing him, like Chucky and the on, on the inside, just no, no, not like screaming this. Right. internally. Right, but right now he's, he's trying to just figure out a way to get around this. He has that swipe. He has the keeper of the grove, and uh, <laughs> you know it's funny thinking all the removal he has in hand, and it just really would not actually make the board this much better, especially when Nosum just has so much damage in hand. Yeah, he needs to look at this hand right now. Like you said, he has he has lots of great removal options, but he's if he wants to go down the removal line, he's going to have to ration this out over two turns and figure out how he gets the most effective clear. But he also might have in the back of his mind that maybe he needs to play a minion next turn to be able to fight onto the board that way, because he also has two five drops going into his five mana turn next turn. So he's going to have to find a way he wants to ration this out. It looks like he is going to go for the removal line. This potentially sets up a keeper next turn. A living roots draw would be great to go with it. And if these uh, tunnel oh. trolls don't get buffed too much, the number two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's going to haunt Chalky's nightmares. Much. Yeah, well, well uh, played. Obviously, different too. Same principle, though. And yeah. Chalky continues to be in a really bad spot. And he, as you said, he can keep her at the Grove here to get rid of one of these tunnel trucks. Innervade comes out. Do you guys think it really makes much of a difference having the ability to have seven mana? Yeah. It, it, it could. You yeah. could Keeper of the Grove on one of the Trogs and then Innervate Wrath. You float a mana, but you get rid of you know, six damage on board, which is nice. Uh, the Azure Drake Innervate uh, Wrath for two damage on one of the Trogs is also really nice. Or you could even just go ahead and kill off uh, the Totem Golem. But yeah, it looks like he's going to get the draw. Go ahead and kill off one of those Trogs, which represents more damage than the Golem in the long run. Right. It represents more potential damage, and the, the, the extra health on the Trog doesn't matter too much because the Drake is there to challenge it anyway if it lives. So. <laughs> Getting rid of the potential damage of the Tunnel Trog seems more reasonable there. Does pick up an Ancient of Law, which the way of this game is going is not going to be used to draw cards in this matchup, if, it, if he even has time to play it at all. Um, but he's he's still got a lot of work to be done here. Right, and I want to point out, you know, Aggro Shaman is a deck that really needs to get control of the board early and kind of battle for the board in like the first four or five turns. That's when it's can sustain the board and then kind of look to win with either the Doom Hammer or the spells chained together. But you know, Nasim is just an embarrassment of riches when it comes to <laughs> the the early board presence. And you know, Druid, which is usually very much predicated on getting out a quick thing with Innervate, something like uh, you know Shredder, something like Doctor Boom. Just he's been off the board the whole time. He just oh, has. This will be the first time he's had anything on the board because he's been forced to play so defensively.
Right, it's the first time he's had anything on the board that can't be just immediately contested, but there we see Nostum is in fact also running the Flame Tongue Totem, which is a card that uh, Chucky very much evangelized in his qualification through the North American prelims. Said of the cards, it had the highest win rate of any card in the deck when he tested. Nostum obviously agrees, he's running the Flame Tongue Totem as well, and you can see it here, essentially, two mana Corcoran Elite, four damage added for two mana. I mean, that was a great draw. And Chalky obviously plays the Flame Tongue himself, knows the potential of what this card can do. Maybe he had it in the back of his head that Nostum was running it. And, you know, maybe, I'm, I'm sure they talked about their decks, maybe not quite as in-depth as, as they know now, but in the back of his head, he had to be thinking, this is a possibility. And it's sort of, you know, getting back at him. It's, it's what he didn't want to see at this point. Important he cleared out that Flame Tongue Totem. If he had not, with the Golem coming down, it would have been, I believe, one off mm -hmm. lethal there, but still just so much damage. And he does have a clear board finally, but oh, oh that's it. That's the draw. The that game. is going to be it. And Chalky is going to go ahead and go down 0 oh, 2 in this as Nasim takes the second game off the back of just. Bro, did he draw a single spell? We did spell? not see a single no. spell that game. It you was every <laughs> minion, pretty much every minion that the Shaman has, and no spells, no Doomhammer. Right. If you, Strictly on minion damage. If you haven't seen Aggro Shaman before, it's really heavily predicated on spells. Cannot right. stress that mm -hmm. enough. Crackles, Lava Shocks, there's even some Earth Shocks in there sometimes. Spirit. Lightning, Lightning bolts, bolts, Lava Bust, yeah. yeah crazy. It's just a ton of it. And then, uh, as you said, Doomhammer, Rockbiter. Mm -hmm. So those are the other cards in the deck, and Nasim just had all early game minions. And, you know, the Druid, if given time, can kind of, like, help to, to parse out some of that damage with the Ancient of Lore, it does have a little bit of healing. Mm -hmm. Never even came to that because the density of Nasim's draw was just so heavily predicated on board presence. Right, and the important thing there was the first four or five minions. The yeah. two the two, the, the two Tunnel Trogs, the two Totem Golems. Mm -hmm. After that, he would have taken spells. He would have taken yeah. <laughs> yeah. he would have taken Lava Burst, Crackle <laughs> right. off the top, etc. Just so happened he got Charge Minions and you know, the Abusive Sergeant, which essentially function as spells in the same way. They just directly did burst damage to face. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the opening draw with all the early minions, that's what you want because you right. need that chip damage in first from the minions to back up your late game burst. And it's important to note that Chalky's hand wasn't bad this game. He no. had the Wild Growth into Keeper of the Grove, Azure Drake, Lothab, double swipe. He had pretty much everything that he would have needed to remove these minions, but in this case, Wild Growth was too slow. Happens. Right, and uh, as we said, it's an explosive deck that pro players believe can take a win off of anyone. Now, Chalky goes down O and 2. two. Uh, <laughs> We had a chance to talk to him, though, and Chalky coming into this was actually extremely confident about his chances. Really felt like this is his time to shine. So uh, we're going to play a video about what we talked to him about and what he had to say about his chances. Well, if you're winning and performing, you can't really be ignored in this game. I'm Keaton Gill. I go by Chalky. I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Indiana. When I was younger, I mean, my parents signed me up for like sports and all that, you know, just like a lot of other kids. I played those and it was it was fun, uh, the competition aspect, but it wasn't something I was, you know, completely destroying at. And so I went to my first card game tournament. It was just in my local town. My dad drove me there, it was like five minutes. And I won the entire thing. I think that really sparked something in me. I was like, you know, this is a lot more fun because I'm winning. Hearthstone has kind of exploded in a big way. Uh, I played in so many tournaments over the last two years, and I've never won one. Uh, I might have more second places than anyone else. Uh, I've gotten semifinals to finals, but the, the win has just eluded me. You know, and everyone mostly loses. You know, you go to an event, there's 16 people, 15 are going to be losers. I've basically been here before, uh, about two years ago, 2014. I was, you know, one of the last eight people, just like I am now, and I lost. And so to get another chance at this um, and maybe be able to get that win, it just means everything to me. Now, I've kind of been around for all of Hearthstone's history. And, you know, if I move on and I'm done with Hearthstone, I want to be able for me to look back, for other people to look back and be like, yeah, Chalky was one of the top players. And there's no argument you can make about it. Honestly, I just feel like, you know, I'm the best here and I'm going to prove it. Chalky believes he's one of the best players here, but he's in a really rough spot. He's gone down 0-2, and, you know, we've talked at length in the past, in tournaments past, about the psychological effect of being down 0-2 and, and, and how much pressure there is. But for Chalky, this is one of those players where I don't, I'm not expecting nerds. I'm just expecting him to sit down and figure out, okay, how do I win this game? And Sadl, you're, you're very fond of the fact that he's so heavily focused on statistics and he's not yeah. mired down in kind of the minutia of the tournament setting. So what do you kind of expect to see from him going into this one? Yeah, it's interesting. Chucky has a, has a personality in general is someone that I relate quite heavily to. I'm also the kind of person that does not have fun unless I'm doing well at something. I 
like, uh, you know, the, just, it's the taking part that counts. That's all nonsense. It's about winning. <laughs> and Chucky believes the same thing. So he's not having fun right now. But what that mentality also gives you is the ultimate drive to be able to turn things like this around because it means everything to you. It's, it's a personal thing. You feel the misery of being behind. He's going to need to turn it around. I have to correct you just a little bit, Saddle. It's also about making friends and wearing bow ties while casting Hearthstone. Also nonsense. Oh, absolutely. Absolute nonsense. 100% about winning, Rob. Uh, we'll agree to disagree on that. We'll discuss this more later. But uh, Cora, going into this, Nasum just one game away. Mm -hmm. He's got your and there's kind of a little bit, of, not to not to make light of Chalky's number two curse here, but there's kind of another curse when it comes to the winter season, which is Druid and Paladin getting into a situation where they just need to win one game and close up. That's it. Just one game. Yep. Powerhouse decks. Decks that uh, everyone's like, wow, this deck is super strong, super frustrating to play against. They just need one game, and they just get swept. And They just can't do it. Uh, for Nasim here, he's going against that aggro shaman, so we'll actually see the inverse of what we saw last match, which is Chalky on that aggro shaman now and, and Nasim on the Druid. What do you, you you do you stand by your prediction that Shaman is favored in this? I do. I think we're actually seeing some some different cards from Chalky. That Haunted Creeper in the Aggro Shaman is a little bit unusual, but especially against something like the Druid, it's a sticky minion. It's difficult to remove. Might put it even a little bit more in Chalky's favor. But Nostum's opening hand is really nice. The Living Roots in the Wrath could combat something like the Trog, the Totem Golem we see in Chalky's hand. Uh, might even give Nostum a little bit better of a chance this time. Yeah, Haunted Creeper classically always one of considered the best cards in old fashioned mid range shaman because of the value it can bring with Flame Tongue Totem with the buffs in the deck. And we've seen, I would expect Chucky and Nostum to be playing similar lists, and we've seen a little bit of Chucky's list before. He's playing a very minion focused version of the deck with the Flame Tongue Totem in there, so the Haunted Creeper does make a lot of sense. Right, and as you pointed out, Chucky, one of those players who, who's very much by the numbers, when something goes in his deck, there's a reason. And yes. he's tested mm -hmm. over hundreds of games, as well as the rest of Team Dignitas. He gets a lot of support from Blackout, Kranich, Green Sheep, and they all test these things. And if Haunted Creeper is in here, it's in here because it wins. Yes. It, it has to have something like over an 85% win rate, I think, to mm -hmm. even make it into Chucky's deck. So Yeah, and to be clear on the, the stats that they do, this isn't I put this card in my deck and then I track the win rate of the deck. This is games where the card is played, the yeah. win rate yes. of what happens. So. He has tested these cards in individual situations, and he knows when a, when a card gets played. Even more in-depth than that, he has stats on how often Aggro Shaman wins when you press Totemic Call Hero Power, <laughs> which is very low, unsurprisingly. No, but especially think about it. Chalky plays that Flame Tongue Totem. We saw it in Nostum's deck as well. The Haunted Creeper works so well with the Flame Tongue Totem. You can go ahead and trade up with it, and then the two Spectral Spiders can actually use the Flame Tongue buff as well. So it makes it makes sense. And now we see the Knife Juggler coming into Chalky's hand. This Haunted Creeper just seems more and more like it really fits into this deck style. Yeah, Knife Juggler, a card that's mostly rotated out. It was in the very early lists when uh, Luffy and, and Co. kind of mm -hmm. popularized it, but it got replaced quite quickly with Flame Juggler just because of the, its extra efficiency right. in the early game against things like Shielded Minibot. But when you put Haunted Creeper in your deck, suddenly Knife Juggler starts to make a lot more sense again. Yeah, it does really feel like Chalky's kind of gotten away from the, the version of Aggro Shaman that Demigod actually popularized, so... Uh, he, you know, and, and that's very much Chalky. Chalky's all about right. kind of iterating on his own decks, finding out what he thinks works. And, you know, these subtle tweaks can give you an advantage in tournament. Obviously, we're not necessarily seeing it this much in this tournament as Chalky is down 0-2. Uh, but I do want to point out, this is just group stages. Yes. So Chalky mm -hmm. doesn't win this. He's far from eliminated. Still has a lot of tournament to go. We'll be seeing a lot more of him. But uh, obviously, he would like to, to kind of right the ship here and, and get back to some winning ways. Uh, Barrel Spirit's going to help. Barrel Spirit is a great card against Druids. Uh, Corey, you want to explain why? Exactly. It's because Nostum's got the Keeper of the Grove in hand, deals two damage. Druids have a tough time dealing three unless they've got Wrath. They've got the Living Roots for two, Keeper of the Grove for two, Swipe does one. But for some reason, three is just a little bit more difficult. So especially because these guys have Taunt, Feral Spirits brings out two minions, again, working with the Flame Tongue Totem and the Knife Juggler. It's just, it's annoying for the Druid to have to deal with. Right, what uh, what's better than two, three? They just uh, protect yourself from two damage by running sure. minions with three. A little bit of a reach. I'll, I'll go and chastise myself for that one. Saddle. This, this, oh, this line you may tried. have run its course, Rob. I think we should probably it's move just, on. Let's just is move it, to another one. I was going to say, is it going with wacky in the, in the band bit yeah, for the weekend? I thought we yeah, had said so. we weren't going to say that word. Saddle pulled it out. I you did, just said yeah. it. I... Corey, do you want to do you want to say wacky? I don't. All right, great. Take I the high road. I respect <laughs> that. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Thank you, Not Rob, yet. but I shall pass. <laughs> Will choose not to. <laughs> well, Cora, you take the high road, and that's what makes you such a classy caster. And oh, you know me. Nostum can't quite deal with these wolves just yet, so gonna go ahead and just put down the old no fun allowed sign, the sludge belcher. Oh. Wow. 
Your inner, your inner aggro player is just leaking out here, Rob. I've actually been touting the merits of aggro since last year, so this is nothing mm -hmm. new. Everyone in chat knows that I'm a no-skill face hunter player. Yep. Yeah. At least you're wearing a bow tie. Uh, exactly, right? That adds a little bit of class to the whole the whole smork thing here. But uh, Chalky, going to have to get through this Sludge Belter. And, you know, he certainly got a lot of options in hand. He's got that abuse of Sergeant. He's got the Rock Biters. We see the spells. Leper Gnome might come down this turn just to add more pressure. But uh, the way you have to kind of approach this, I, I think, for Chalky, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but you have to kind of figure out a way to get through that Sludge Belter while conserving the most of your board presence. And we see he favors that approach, going for the Lava Burst on the Sludge Belter. He'll be able to get through a little mini slime there, get through that, and be fine. Yeah, the alternate option there was just to send the 3-4 Totem Golem into the Belcher with the Abusive Sergeant, which seems like a great trade. But this way, that way you kind of expose your board to swipe a lot more. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the health makeup on the board now, you have 4, 2, and a 3, with only that um, Abusive Sergeant really being vulnerable to the residual damage of a swipe. So by using the Lava Burst, which does feel like a card you want to point at your opponent's face a lot of the time, just get that meaty right. 5 damage in. But by using it here, you get the repetitive damage in from your minions, get a more consolidated line against... Uh, the range of options your opponent might have for removal. Yeah, and he actually goes ahead and plays that Abusive Sergeant instead of the Leper Gnome. Leper Gnome, whenever it death rattles, will deal the two damage, wants to get that Abusive Sergeant damage in while he still has minions on the board, because later in the game, the Druid is going to end up having the board control. Right, and you know, seeing that Sludge Belcher leads me to believe that this might be more of that kind of taunt-heavy version of Midrange Druid. Mm -hmm. Might even see that one-off copy of Ancient of War, uh, designed specifically to deal with stuff like Zoo, uh, you know, things like Aggro Shaman. Even in the Druid Mirror, it can be super useful to have that. So, uh, Nasum making a, kind of a heady read about the state of the meta right now, especially where the tournaments are. And, you know, if you know you're going to run into Chalky at some point in the tournament, bringing something that's good against Aggro might, might be a pretty heads up play. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of ways you can build Druid to fight back better against against Aggro. There's the way you just illuminated with the, the extra taunts, the Belcher and the Ancient of War, or you can just go quicker with it. You can put in Living Roots and Darnassus Aspirant. You can get the Mind Control tech in there as well. You can have these more early plays that don't involve that hitting the mana ramp cards, but Ancient of War definitely gives uh, aggro decks a few nightmares sometimes. Right. And yeah, Chalky does have that Doomhammer Rockbiter weapon in hand, threatening 10 damage uh, burst right from the get-go. And Nostum picks up the Lothab, however, which is going to be able to stop that if he chooses to play it. Yeah, it's a it's a delaying tactic more than anything though, because it, it blocks the rock biter, it doesn't block the doom hammer, so the doom hammer can still come down, start getting the work in, and it's it's just a it's a one turn extra um, one turn extra that he's bought himself here, but he's going to need more than that to, to see himself through. Yeah, until he draws something, you know, like innervate tree of life. Right, and then, he, <laughs> and he's, then he's solid. Cora, thank you for the charity laugh there. I appreciate that. Uh, I didn't hate it. <laughs> you need, I liked you it. need someone to give you a charity laugh because you're not going to get them from me, Rob. That's why the desks are designed this way. You know, we have the Saddle's very good dry. cop, bad cop. I'll uh, encourage you to an extent. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Well, as you pointed out, it's kind of just a delaying tactic here because Shaman just slathers on the damage, and we actually just see the Flame Tongue come out and uh, still pushing a bunch of damage. Not quite lethal, but not far away either, and still sitting in hand, a brand new Doom Hammer. So Nasum's going to have to clear the board and then also uh, play a taunt and then also heal for some. Yeah, and that, that seems like it would cost a large amount of mana even if all of those cards were in your hand. So right. seems unlikely he'll find a way out of this. He does not. Free health is not going to be enough from the Doomhammer Rock Buyer in hand from Chucky. So Chucky is going to start to climb his way back into this series. Right, so Chucky's going to go ahead and take game three. He's going to not even up the series, but at least bring it to 2 1. It's back on the comeback trail, and must feel really good for him to equip that Doomhammer. Uh, for people who don't know their Hearthstone history, maybe just Hearthstory? Maybe that's something I can. Hearthstory? Hearthstory. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know that I can encourage that. Yeah, Aquabod called me Professor Hearthstone, but I don't think it's going to work. But, uh, Chalky back in the day, America's Championship in 2014, he brought a double Doomhammer Shaman, and he was just bragging. He's like, yeah, you know what does really well? A lot of damage. <laughs> and Doomhammer does a lot of damage, so uh, yeah, for Chalky... ahead of the times. Yeah, this aggro deck that we see now from Shaman is kind of just the final evolved form of mm -hmm. that original double Doomhammer right. Shaman. Tunnel Trog has just tied it all together and made it into a pure face deck, so... Yeah, I gotta wonder if uh, Chalky saw, sees Tunnel Truck come out 2014 and was like, why can't I have this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, great game from Chalky. Manages to bring the series 2-1. Uh, he's still obviously got to work through some things to kind of figure out mm -hmm. how he's going to take this series because, again, Druid, a deck that when you're not just, you know, facing down Leper Gnomes and Abusive Sergeants and right. all these incoming sources of damage, really quickly can just start uh, parsing out a lot of damage. And we look at the poll here, and you know, Nostum is, is the favorite, according to Twitter. So again, if, if you're a Chalky supporter, get out there. Tweet HCT. <laughs> he needs hashtag, to help. <laughs> hashtag Chalky. Lend him your energy. Uh, all you all you aggro players out there have to support Chalky. So uh, Nostum, though, again, one more win with the Druid. 
How possible do you think it is? Uh, it's obviously very, very right. possible. The thing is, with you mentioned the, the propensity for druids and paladins sometimes to get reverse swept when it's the last deck you need. Right. And the reason for that is, is that they are considered the most powerful deck in the format, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but if you follow that through, that means either you're going to ban it out because you're afraid of it, and if you haven't banned it, you feel comfortable that the lineup that you've brought mm -hmm. is able to beat it. So therefore, you know, you're targeting that deck. So when it comes down, you say, sure, this is the strongest deck in the meta, but I've built my lineup to beat it, so go ahead and play it. Yeah, and if we actually look at Chalky's two remaining decks, he's got the Druid. The mirror can go anyone's way. It can be anybody's game. Everybody loves a good Druid mirror. I know you do, Rob. Um, uh. But we've also seen that Paladin <laughs> coming from Chalky. Nice. Uh, so the Paladin actually is generally slightly favored against the Druid. So Chalky actually does still have a decent chance to come back from this. All right, the Druid Mirror. Let's bust Everybody's it out. Everybody's favorite. It's, you know, let's go down the, the list of casterisms on the Druid Mirror. Very swingy game, back and forth. I got one for you right here. Nostum is a really good Druid player. Very He's drawn skilled. Both yeah. Innovate and Wild Grove. Doesn't See if look... Chalky can muster up that skill and get one of those ramp cards no, that, himself. That's, that's Paladin Core. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know me. I just I can't even, get out of that. I was going to say, even when you're not playing Paladin, you're just thinking about muster for battle. So. Uh, Nostrum does kind of have, well, not even kind of, just has the better opening hand here. We yes. see that wall growth, we see the innervate, and Chalky's hand. Now, there's kind of this school of thought where maybe you can afford to be a little greedy with the coin and you keep the piled in shredder and you're just like, right. eh, maybe I get the innervate, and even if I don't, it's coming out on three for the most mm -hmm. part. Yeah, having the Pilot Shredder in your hand basically activates all the good cards that you're looking to draw. It, okay. it, <laughs> ma it, makes, it makes Innovate great, it makes Wild Growth great, but the problem is you, you keep one card, so that's one less slot that you can use to draw it. He does keep that Living Roots, and Living Roots is a great. Oh, it gets the Wild Grove. Two incredibly skilled Druid players. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they both have the Wild Growth. Uh, Chalky's going to be able to throw to, jam down the Living Roots. Now, he could coin out the second Living Roots, and I'm actually not sure that's a terrible play. Uh, uh, if you're generating four damage per turn and you're banking on your opponent having something sure. like the Wild Growth, and then you just innervate or you Wild Growth next turn into that pile of Shredder. I think with the Doctor Boom in hand, maybe getting that down one turn early, because you have a decent chance to draw a five drop here. You have double Drake, double Druid of the Claw. So if you Wild Growth on two, you pilot a Shredder on three, and then you have a decent chance to have right. then drawn a five drop with the Drake or Druid of the Claw, and then you can coin Boom on the turn after. That was That's the line I see mm -hmm. with Druid. It's kind of a cathartic part of playing Druid, where you look at your opening hand, yeah. And it's like, okay, in which way can I, I cheat see the here? future? Uh, Chalky, Chalky favors getting that damage now. All right. I you do. and Chalky have similar smork mindsets, though, so this this makes sense. We eat Froyo together a lot, so we kind of got that connection. But uh, Nostum plays down that wild growth, and getting that swipe is really big for him because I was actually going to bring up if he doesn't get it, he's forced to kind of do this awkward thing where it's, do I trade into the living roots or right. just keep? Because that's a multiple turn endeavor to get rid of them, and uh, at that point. You're not really pressuring anything if you're constantly using the hero power, if you're constantly using any minions you put down to deal with the living roots, but wouldn't be surprised if Nasim just ripped that swipe and just pointed at the face and bye-bye yeah. <laughs> little saplings. But at the same time, Nostum playing this swipe here does clear Chalky's board, but it also lets Chalky continue to have that board initiative. Yeah, anytime you can force the Druid to not be pushing their agenda and just reacting, as we've seen with the Shaman games, that's kind of how you beat Druid. Mm -hmm. Right, second Innovate drawn from Nostum a little too late. He, he can Innovate out the Ancient of Law here if he choose to, or just use the Druid of the Claws to contest, but those Innovates are quickly losing value um, the longer he waits to use them. He could even get a Wrath here off the Ancient of Law draw and Innovate out the second one here to dominate the board a bit more heavily. Yeah. Nostum uh, looks like he's going to go with that Ancient of Law play. He will not be healing this time. This will be the, the oh, first darn. time Ancient of Law will be looking at drawing cards in this series, though. Uh, get some pretty reasonable draws there. The Living Root's not really worth innervating out at this point, so you just play down that Ancient Allure. And, you know, Chalky is going to have to do a little bit of awkward math to, to kind of get that rid of that Ancient of Allure. Uh, wouldn't expect him to press face just yet here because uh, this is one of those matchups where you constantly have to be kind of taking the temperature of your opponent and be like, all right, are you about to kill me with a combo and right. a minion? Mm -hmm. So probably going to have to trade out with an Ancient Allure. Cora, how do you think he does it? Uh, probably just a hit and a hero power. You don't want to throw that swipe away right now, but this is an awkward turn for Chalky because it swings that game back in Nostum's favor where now he is the one who's going to be able to put pressure. Chalky's going to be left with a two-mana minion, and Nostum has that second innervate in hand, Drew to the Claw, Azure Drake. The fact that Chalky has to skip turn five is such mm. a detriment to him. 
Yeah, and as I mentioned, with the double Drake, double Druid of the Claw in the deck, more than likely, or some kind of makeup similar to that in terms of five drops, you're 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 pretty confident in drawing a five drop at um, most games. Your your kind of percentage odds to be able to do that. So having just this handful of awkward spells is not what Chucky's going to want here. He's going to have to find some way to ration this out. Chooses to use a Savage Roar to do it. Valuing the swipe over the Savage Roar as a card to have his ha in his hand, essentially, is what he's done here, which is uh, pretty interesting. It's essentially just valuing five health on your 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 hero instead of that Savage Roar in right. hand. Right, yeah. Very that's, true. that's interesting. We see the Amani Berserker come down, and you know, if it enrages, it does. You know, again, has the ability to do plus three damage, and maybe you get fancy with a Wrath there and, <laughs> and boost it up. But uh, not going to be an option as an Adra Drake and Living Roots are going to make short work of that Berserker. And yeah, Chalky in a spot now where uh, do you swipe the Drake? Do you just play down the Shredder and Here Power? Do you Force of Nature? I mean, you don't want a Force of Nature. That feels, I think, the worst option. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drake is kind of on that list of minions that. You feel like you have to kill every time it's on the board, regardless of class. You know, Druid isn't the best at taking advantage of it, but if they do have the, the spell tempo available to them, it's a thing that can become very, very tricky. But yeah, I think he needs to at least make some sort of play here to get the initiative back, because as Cora's mentioned a couple of times already, a just pure removal turn there would just yet again hand initiative back mm -hmm. to the other Druid player and say, go ahead, free turn, play what you like. Right, we do see Chalky, you know, he does have Dr. Boom. And this is a card where he's been quoted as saying before that if you're not running Dr. Boom in your deck, that you're just doing it wrong. Like, <laughs> he really does believe this is just the most powerful card. You just got to have it. And we, we see a lot of players, you know, in decks like Zoo, uh, Aggro Shaman, they don't really tend to run it. But Chalky's like, nope, let's go in here. It's Dr. Boom. It does mm -hmm. a lot of damage. <laughs> if he plays it down, if he plays it down, though, uh, and Nostum does not trade out with the Shredder, now there is a world where that mind control tech for Nostum gets valued. Yeah, I think the Shredder's probably getting dealt with this turn, mm -hmm. though. Keeper of the Grove Wrath just looks way too clean here. He can choose to cycle a card and use the uh, Innovate Hero Power to take it out, which I guess is the consideration here. It's the only reason you'd really pause at this point, but it seems a little bit... No, he's going to he go, go for it. He's going to go for it. Oh, no, no, he's going to innovate the Mind the Control Tech okay. instead. Okay. This is, if he didn't do this, his board, while, you know, still intimidating, wasn't necessarily positioned to end the game. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, in the next couple turns, if he gets that Savage Roar, uh, you know, he can be looking at any of the game, and if Chucky does play down the Dr. Boom here, you know, it's, it's not as intimidating because you have three minions on the board, and while the Azure Drake will certainly die to a Boom Bot because that's the fate of the Azure Drake, uh, you know, you do have more muscle to deal with it. Ooh, that's a pretty good guard uh, to nice. have in your hand when you have a Drake on the board. Um, so yeah, Nostum, Nostum recognizes the fate of the Azure Drake here. He's just going to mm -hmm. throw it face, so he gets the damage in before he swipes here. And uh, just watch in awe as these boom bots do their work. Right, and that uh, spell boosted swipe is going to do really big work there. Oh, oh! The Drake survives! <laughs> the first time in the history of competitive Hearthstone that an Azure Drake has lived uh, after an interaction <laughs> with a boom bot. I actually didn't know if this was possible. I've been trying to get uh, you know some people to tell me for weeks, but here we are. Apparently it is. Azure Drake survives. Now Swipe, uh, pretty good recipe for, for dealing with that, uh, that Azure Drake mm -hmm. and the Mind Control tech, but again, he's not developing something. If he had nine mana, yeah. right, he could Drake, he could play the Swipe, clear board, he feels like he's in a, as good of a spot as he can get. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, obviously Chucky is just, what do you do? Yeah, now the, the play to, to try and get some initiative becomes a bit more scary because you know you're going into the point where the Druid may just be able to kill you. We're getting to that infamous turn nine. So now the, the play to survive starts to become a bit more appealing as a player, but mm -hmm. honestly, it's sometimes it's just a trap that you can fall into and your higher percentage play is to make the more aggressive line and just say, you've got two cards in your hand right now. Yeah. Like, they are not Force of Nature Savage draw, but honestly, with the, the longevity that his hand has right now, he can uh, potentially redraw off the Drake and the Wrath. It may be correct here just to go for the long game, but he is going to go ahead and play the Drake now, make the play onto the board, cycle out the, the two cycle cards now just to get himself ahead on resources. And this is exactly the situation I illuminated where he's saying, sorry, buddy, I don't believe you. Like, you have two cards in hand. Yeah. They're not combo. Yeah, and I want to talk about now, Lothab appears in Chalky's hand, and that's an important pick. It is. It definitely is because it will actually shut out Nostum's combo for one turn. We see the force of nature in Nostum's hand. He does not have the Savage Roar yet, so Chucky's more risky play actually paid off in this case. 
It did, but you know, he, we I said that he had the the advantage on longevity with the Drake and the Wrath being able to redraw, but mm -hmm. Nostum immediately picked up the Ancient of Law, which is the card you need to be able to play that long game. So Nostum is now looking at a decent hand himself to be able to fight this long game. But this uh, this ma this game after going heavily in advantage of Nostum early is kind of coming to a to bit of a head here with both players in a fairly solid position. Yeah, it's definitely evening out. But now Chaki again has to make sort of the same decision that he did last turn. Do I make the safe play? Remove this Ancient of Law. He could force of nature kill it. Hero power put himself at 15, essentially saving himself from that combo, especially since Nostum just drew two more cards. So his his choice is tough. It's do I want to, you know, go for it? Do I want to say you don't have it? Or do I want to make that more safe play? But with the Innervate there, he does have a little bit more flexibility. He can work with a maximum of 11 mana. So if he does Force of Nature, get rid of that Ancient of Lore, he can at least throw down the Lothab, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. It's just, it's very basics of Hearthstone. You have something on the board, your opponent does not, and in this case, they also really can't cast spells. <laughs> Sure. I mean, I love it. Um, this Thank is, you, Professor Hearthstone. Yeah, that is. I can see why you, uh, where, where you got your doctorate. Yeah. But yeah, this is the thing that Druid struggles to deal with more than anything. It's complete swings on the board. It's why things like Tempo Mage are considered one of the best matchups where against Druid. Nice. Because you... oh, did, sorry, did your Tempo Mage radar just go off? No, I actually <laughs> saw the potential for double Druid of the Claw in charge, and I was just like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. He just short circuited for a That's second. That's a damage. He was so Do it. Uh, but you know, Nostum. The first uh, Druid of the Claw is going to be a bear. Maybe yes. the second one's a cat. Who knows? Maybe uh, the second I think that's, I think that's might definitely know. more of a consideration because if he can get one of these Druid of the Claws to, to get in for face damage here, puts him to 10. If he can then get one to attack again next turn, that puts him down to six, plus the force of nature that he has in hand. So. Subtle. He's got two bears. That's two. That's two bears. Yeah. <gasps> it's the, number exactly two. The, number the number two. The number two. Yeah, I know. Oh, no. Chalky I, stuff. I, I went with you, Rob. It's just. Uh, I, I appreciate it. People will never, uh, will never understand the, the eye contact you have to make and how dead you look inside when you humor me on these things. But <laughs> and here I am, <laughs> the third more chair, dead getting to look at you usual. guys trying to connect. I'm and trying just... to reach across the desk. It just it's doesn't okay. have the same Don't effect. Don't worry about it, Rob. <laughs> Saddle has a problem turning left. I'm used to it by now. Oh, we see now <laughs> that Chalky <laughs> has two Ancient of Lores. I'm sorry, Cor. I am the victim of people, of people not <laughs> being able to turn Should we start a support left. group? Yeah, we should. Let's, oh, let's band together. Well, it, first, let's figure out what's going to happen with this right. game. First, let's sure. find out who wins. Chaki has two Ancient of Lores. He can draw into something, but what do you draw into that makes that situation okay with three mana? Right, that's the issue. I believe both Innovates have been used here by Chucky, so even the Innovate plus something line kind of goes out the window, so it might... Might, does healing really even play around anything here? You go, go down to 11, back up to 16, so... You're still dead to combo. Yeah, you're still dead There's to combo. You're still not he dead heals to just the low of nature. That's nice. interesting. I like that a lot, actually, thinking about it. He has to respect that the damage isn't there and just say that he's winning this game on the board, but it's, it's a line there. that's going to get punished, but I don't hate it. I think it was probably the optimal line in the mm. situation. All right, so Nasim is going to go ahead and take the series 3-1. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's that much of an upset. Nasim, a very skilled player, and here to prove it. And uh, he does prove it by taking down Chalky in this particular matchup. Obviously, Chalky not out of the tournament yet. He will have his chance to prove himself and continue along in the Winter Championship. Uh, hats off to Nasim, though. He played that well and, you know, recognized, again, Druid Mirror is one of those things where yeah. super swingy. Kind of comes down to, I do want to point out, no combo. Combo was not the decider. Right? I mean, I've actually didn't see a casted single some pretty... Combo. In not any of the Druid games, Not did to we? win the game, no. I mean, we saw combo pieces yeah, being yeah, used, but... but was, not together. Right. I was going right. to say, like, I've, I've actually casted some interesting Druid mirrors recently, and they've been interesting for that reason, which mm -hmm. is more and more players in that matchup are starting to use the combo pieces for board control, and it's being fought out more, honestly. Right, and we actually have Frodan standing by with Nasim to get his thoughts on that intense matchup. Thank you very much, Rob and the crew. I'm joined by Nostam, the first winner of the series between Chalky. Now, Nostam, you mentioned uh, in your interviews preparing for the America's Championship that this is kind of an important tournament because you're starting to take Hearthstone a little bit more seriously. How far do you have to go for you to be satisfied to potentially commit more time to it? Uh, I really want to just make it into the top four, but of course, you know, I want to get first, but I at least want to make it out of group stages. Now, you mentioned also that it's very difficult to try and play perfect on stream. You know, there's a lot of nerves, but you have a lot of experience being a streamer, too. Do you feel like you're playing to the best of your ability? And if not, then how do you feel like you can get to that zone? Uh, right now, I didn't really feel that nervous. Like, it's obviously stressful just because, you know, there's a lot that's not in your control. So you're just hoping for the best. But I'm used to, you know, playing in front of people. And I don't know, the amount of people watching isn't really stressing me out. So. 
And then finally, let's talk a little bit about that series. Uh, you know, it didn't actually go that smoothly for Chalky's Drew in the very beginning. Were you expecting that, or did you feel like you just played your game and it didn't really matter what he was doing? Well, the first matchup, I was definitely not happy with getting Warrior into Druid because that's pretty favored for him. But uh, the Druid usually doesn't win if they can't find Ancient of Lore, which he couldn't. So I ended up getting into a position where, you know, it just locked him out of the game. All right, Bob. Uh, so you have gotten your first one out of the way, and I know that's the, the hardest one to get out. So you're feeling pretty good. Uh, how are you going to prepare for your upcoming match against either Amnesiac or Talion? Uh, as soon as I see who wins the match, I'm going to spend probably a lot of the night just researching as much as I can, put the list together that they show here, just doing a lot of research and practice games with, you know, my friends, Mazu and Frank. That's right, it's Lead Paint also on Grand Nance Champions. Congratulations, Nostam, a job well done for today. In the meantime, we are wrapped up here for the interview with Nostam. Let's head over to the sidebar with TJ, Savitz, and Reyna to see what their thoughts on the match. Thank you very much, Dan and Nostam. Uh, what a match to start off with. After talking to a lot of players and, and some of the personalities here, uh, Nassim and Chalky are, are two of the players that came in as, as favorites. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about the lineups and the bands. Warlock bands coming out from both sides. Savits, what do you think of this? Yeah, it's really interesting to see. Also, really surprising was that Nostam chose to bring that warrior instead of the paladin that Chucky did. That was like the main difference in these lineups. Both warlock bands coming out, expectedly zoo warlocks, I would imagine, looking at those lineups, they would kind of like complement the overall strategy. Yeah. And uh, Reynad, uh, Nostam actually brought Patron Warrior to the prelims, and he decided to switch it up and go with that Elise Warrior, the Elise Control Warrior. Uh, coming into the winter championships. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on that switch up and the, the Elise Warrior in the current meta? Uh, the Elise Warrior deck has definitely become a lot more popular lately. It's very, very powerful. We've seen even different variants of that, including Jeweled Scarab or without, and uh, definitely a solid choice to bring uh, against the, the matchups that Nostum expected. I suppose he figured it had a better chance than Patron, whereas kind of a more, a field with more variety, like ranked play, uh, a deck like Patron might be a little bit better of a choice. Yeah, and uh, it did have some success, uh, but I was talking to some of the, the players backstage, or, or you guys were in, uh, some of the players were criticizing Chalky's uh, opening deck choice. He decided to open with Druid, which Conquest, there's been a lot of arguments for what deck you open with and if it matters. Uh, Stavitz, talk to us a little bit about the choice to open with Druid and how the opening pick affects your, your deck choices in Conquest. Personally, I think it was a fine pick. Like, Druid is, uh, doesn't have all that bad counters aside from the potential Zoo Warlock, but that one was banned. So I think it's a solid choice. But what really threw Chucky off was the fact that, like you mentioned, that uh, Nostom played the Patron Warrior in the preliminaries, and uh, now he chose to switch it up, and that affected uh, Chucky's Mulligans, like Ancient of Lore in the beginning, in the, in, the, in the starting hand. He threw it away. That's a great card, maybe the best card you have against the Control Warrior. But Chucky thought it was, it was probably Patrons, and he threw it away, never see, saw it again, and run out of cards. All right, well, let's take a look at the clip from that first game and see exactly how it played out. Uh, so we're going to show a, a screenshot here of, of a moment. There's actually a lot of decisions here, and the, the line that Nassim went was a little bit interesting. So, Rain Ed, why don't you uh, talk through some of the decisions that are going through Nassim's head uh, at the beginning of this play? Yeah, so the entire game leading up to this point, Nasm has been behind on board. He's very conscious that, you know, taking damage against Druids is very dangerous because as soon as you're within that 14 life total range, you're dead to the Force of Nature combo on turn 9. So he opts to hold on to the Revenge here and not use it along with the Bash to just have a clear board and go with the Sludge Belcher instead. If you went with the Revenge Bash, sure, the board would be clear, but once again, the Druid would have the initiative, make that first play, and Nostum would just be behind again next turn, and he knows that. And he decides to opt for the Sludge Belcher, and it's a bit of an interesting play. I think Savitz and I were kind of leaning towards the Bash Revenge more, because in my personal opinion, that's better because you have the Shield Maiden Shield Slam on turn 7, but this play is also very good too. You save that Revenge, maybe get better value later when he's at a low life total. Yeah, getting the full clear going into turn 6 it would be absolutely amazing because naturally Druid tends to have very limited options on turn 6. Turn 7, yes, there's two lores, probably a Doctor Boom, but turn 6, it's mostly just a, either playing a, like an Emperor Tourism, which, which would have been there, but uh, the board clear seems so tempting, but Nostam choosing to keep the revenge, I believe the reason is, is mostly that he, he thinks that uh, he's going to get even more value with that particular card later on, maybe to clear a shade once he's under uh, 12 HP. Yeah, so we're going to see here that Chucky's is actually going to be able to clear off this Sludge Belcher relatively easily with the Savage Roar and be left with a pretty decent board. So I, I want to get your thoughts, uh, Raynette, on this matchup in general. Uh, Control Warrior has evolved a lot over the past few months with the addition of uh, Elise. 
control warriors a lot of times aren't running threats and they're running all removal. How has that changed the druid versus control warrior matchup? Uh, well, like like most matchups at a, at a high level with uh, popular decks, uh, if you ask a control warrior main, he's going to say that warrior is a little bit favored. If you ask the druid player, then druid's going to be favored. In my opinion, I would say druid is slightly favored just because control warrior needs a little bit stronger of a draw to win on average. Uh, and, you know, Druid just constantly applying that pressure throughout the game, having cards like Azure Drake and Ancient of Lore to keep their hand full. I think it's a bit unlucky on Chalky's part to not get one of the card draw cards to kind of, you know, keep the, the gas coming. But, uh, yeah, it's overall not, not too favored for either deck, I would say. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's, it's pretty close now uh, with all the changes that have been made, where in the past it was a pretty polarizing matchup. Uh, but let's take a look at another shot from actually the very last game. Uh, it was a play where there was uh, quite a few uh, moving parts here. There was a lot of decisions to be made. And in a Druid versus Druid mirror like this one, when both players start to get to that point where they're getting into combo range, it, it's really tense. So, Savitz, walk me through some of Chalky's decisions and uh, the, the plays leading up to this one. Yeah, this is definitely an extremely difficult turn for Chucky. There's no good play available. He's already down to 14 HP, so a combo from Nostam's side would end the game. Um, if you're Chucky, you kind of just have to take some risks here, I believe. If the combo is there, you're probably going to lose anyway. Chucky chooses to go for the go for the low tap and use his force of nature to clear off the the Ancient of Lore. We were talking with Reynard about a potential different line where maybe just playing the playing the low tap, swiping face, setting your opponent down to 14 HP to potentially be able to make a comeback with the, with the Roar top deck. Yeah, I definitely would have liked to see that more aggressive play. Uh, the play that Chucky made did give him initiative on the board, which is definitely it put him in a reasonable position. But, I mean, if Nassim draws that combo at any point, you pretty much can't win. So I would have liked to see him take the very, very small chance to win from a losing position. Yeah, to be fair, one roar was already played from Chucky's side, but maybe if he chose a different path and chose to keep that roar earlier on, it might have worked, played out differently. Yeah, against Druid, there's, there's always that, you know, argument where uh, are you playing to win or are you playing to not lose? And there's a certain points where you have to play around combo for a while, but there's sometimes where you just have to, you know, suck it up and just go for the, the risky play. But a uh, really interesting series. And once again, uh, a big congratulations to Nostum for moving on. But while well, we are going to jump into our next match soon, but while we do that, enjoy some highlights from the last match.